the risks of an overly militarized U.S. strategy. Uh, now, um, many would say if, we, if you look at the changes since the end of the Cold War, the predominant effort on the emergence of the Asia-Pacific region as a whole, and China in particular, in terms of its economic uh, capabilities, uh, that uh, it seems odd to be thinking in terms of military measures. But let's recognize that for the last 10 years or so, the United States has, uh, had its, has been distracted, if at a minimum, by its military obligations in Iraq and Afghanistan that have drained the United States of enormous uh, sums of money as well as uh, enormous uh, blood and sacrifice. So as others have noted, this idea of shifting away from a focus on other parts of the world, hopefully being able to exit gracefully uh, from these conflicts may enable now a focus uh, again on what is happening across the Asia Pacific region. Uh, but I would say that there is an inherent risk that um, China's growing military power will be seen by some as in essence the means to save a very, very large U.S. defense budget. Um, and provide the United States, some would argue, with a much more singular organizing focus in its military strategy that it has obviously lacked since the demise of the Soviet Union. So we ought to be asking, on the part of the United States, power projection for what? What are we seeking to prevent? What do we fear? Uh, what is the message we are seeking to send to China? No state wants its freedom of action curtailed, uh, but the question is whether or not we can achieve understandings with China uh, that have a sufficient basis for mutual uh, understanding and even a degree of restraint as opposed to uh, proceeding uh, to a, a retreat to an undue focus on military operations uh, as the defining point of our respective strategies. So there's a default option context that I think we need to uh, examine very, very carefully. Um, in a larger sense, uh, it seems to me, these shifts reflect the Asia-Pacific region's uh, uneasy transition, uh, where uh, words and budgets aside, neither the United States nor China have the means or methods to exercise unconstrained domination. Uh, as Richard has pointed out, so much of what hap has happened here has been this effort to relink to American friends and allies in the region, and I think that that makes a great deal of sense. But no one power has an ability to dominate so comprehensively that they can't look at the responses and the capabilities of others as a factor. Uh, 